Hello, good evening, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day analysis for the following trading day, which is Thursday, the 3rd of March 2016. Okay, let's try and um, understand uh, exactly what's going on here in terms of uh, price action, especially given the fact that US markets have closed as well. As always, US markets dictate the potential direction, and obviously, Asian markets will too. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs, especially since we're a CFD brokerage. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site www.cfds.education to learn more. Okay, so in terms of market close, let's just uh, sum up the uh, the actual uh, uh, end of day uh, data. So, uh, first of all, the Dow itself finished up 18 points more or less flat. S&P 500 finished up five points uh, currently trading at 1986 after hours at the moment it went for that gap okay uh, uh, 18 or 1989 I didn't expect it to close that gap but it certainly uh, certainly did okay so the S&P 500 at 1984 close at 1984 the Nasdaq uh, more or less uh, is currently trading around the 4330 level which I'll discuss shortly okay so um, more or less a flat close overnight or today in the US session, uh, yeah, um, FTSE 100 certainly was under pressure throughout the day. Uh, closed around 6147 after obviously uh, hitting a pivot high of almost 6220, I think, overnight. The German DAX finished positive in the CAC as well, and that certainly seems to be on the QE train at the moment. Okay, now in terms of news flow, let's just bring up the actual uh, economic data uh, out of the US. Really, we had the uh, mortgage application certainly weaker. ADP employment, Jane, 214,000 jobs were created versus the 190k expected. So that certainly helped the uh, helped the market from that perspective. Although ISM New York index certainly came out weaker, and the Fed's beige book certainly came out slightly positive, stroke neutral. So, how do we interpret that? Good question. Okay. Now, uh, the uh, the biggest uh, news of the day really was the uh, increase in the uh, oil stock uh, crude draw. Okay, the crude inventories, etc. data that came out certainly came out three times as much as everybody expected. So therefore, that was supposed to exert a downward pressure or bearish pressure on the price of oil. That obviously didn't occur, and the markets moved in the opposite direction. Now, one of the arguments for the markets moving higher post the uh, oil data, okay, oil inventories data, was the fact that uh, the Saudis are going for a 10 billion uh, bond uh, loan potential, and that certainly signals distress in Saudi Arabia, which will, which in turn. Well, it will force them to obviously start to uh, pushing up the price of oil or cutting back on supply. So, so that really is the uh, the main argument. Now, oil prices didn't really actually break out. I mean, that's one of the things that's quite strange. I mean, we didn't have a major breakout in oil. I mean, if anything, we held that uh, key resistance zone, which is around the uh, 34, 35, uh, 34 to 35 region. As you can see here, you've got horizontal resistance. So... No real overtly uh, move higher or bullish move. It's just really a top. Ever since that topping tail uh, was put in, we certainly held that topping tail. In the daily chart, you can see we are still holding that potential topping tail resistance. So, no real uh, conviction, etc., with regards to a break in the price of oil higher. So, again, that's certainly something to consider going forward. Okay, given the fact that obviously the FTSE now is into resistance, you are expecting the rest of the markets to. Uh, potentially be into resistance as well so uh, given the fact that oil prices obviously dictate the movements so uh, so profoundly okay right let's bring up the chart of euro stocks now let's look at the market from a, a technical perspective just before i do let me just bring up the chart of the s p 500 because it will be absolutely crucial here the 60 minute chart certainly continues to make higher highs and higher lows the bulls certainly are in control at the moment even though i didn't attempt to short and my stop loss is currently 1987 so it's not far from potentially being hit on the uh, S&P 500 and uh, currently at 1985, uh, so not far from being hit. But certainly I've been proven wrong uh, in terms of the uh, the S&P 500 now, especially given the fact that the USD JPY is into resistance and that certainly didn't have any effect either. So I'll bring up the chart on NASDAQ as well, NASDAQ bullish consolidation really. I mean, it's um, quite an impressive thrust higher. The daily chart, as you can see here, or 60-minute chart, you can see the next resistance zone at the moment seems to be 43.60. So impressive, impressive move on the NASDAQ as well. So no backing down, even though we did get a bearish candle, especially given the fact that biotech and semiconductors certainly are into resistance. Uh, the market certainly is uh, 
is not uh, buying that at all. It certainly wants to uh, buy the bully story. And whether or not it's front running something, we don't know yet. So, okay, now let's go to the Euro stocks. Okay, so Euro stocks weekly chart I think is very important because we are into that previous support equals resistance. Weekly chart is at 200 MA resistance. Daily chart, you are looking at resistance, previous support equals resistance, and then you have horizontal resistance above. So there's 3020 zone, you can clearly see this resistance there. The 10 minute chart of Euro stocks, you can see that we've moved lower, we close the gap, and then we obviously buy a bounce towards the afternoon. We are into that FIB 75% resistance, looking for a lower high, and then obviously the markets to move lower. Okay, now the German DAX itself, let's bring up the German DAX, the 10 minute chart, you can see the markets making higher highs and higher lows. Now we certainly seem to be uh, continuing the thrust higher. Okay, now I did expect the markets to break down, given the fact that we've broken out this bullish channel here, and the market trading sideways, and then potentially moving lower. So certainly looking at a potential lower price on the German DAX. Now, after hours, the German DAX is currently trading at, let's just confirm that, currently trading at the uh, 97. <laughs> 80 region, so basically more or less in the same sort of zone. Okay, 60 minute chart on German DAX. You can see that we held that resistance zone here. Ever since we held that, it certainly has been weak and looking for a lower high, looking to break down. Daily chart of the German DAX, you can see that we put in a doji candle, uh, certainly put in a doji candle on German DAX. So again, that certainly is a potential resistance zone. You did have a gap here as well, so obviously we closed that gap and we still. We're still consolidating around there. We have resistance at 9880, so again, that certainly is a zone to watch. Okay, now in terms of the MDAX 50, you can see that we clearly are into gap fill resistance, so therefore indicating resistance on the German DAX itself. The tech oil share as well, putting a doji candle and certainly indicating a potential reversal. Okay, now the CAC itself, CAC, let's uh, bring up the CAC index, go to a daily chart first of all. You can see that we put in a doji. And uh, you can see that we have horizontal resistance as well on the French CAC. So again, horizontal resistance plus doji, that is a key signal for a potential move below. Looking at weakness below. Okay, so 60 minute chart. Let's just go over to the French CAC now. 60 minute at the moment. It's just still continuing with higher highs and higher lows, but you do have this horizontal resistance across. So this level was certainly important today. And uh, the market certainly has... Uh, wavered between that now the next level if we do push higher than is 4 4 60 for the uh, French CAC although we were weak throughout the day and we did actually close that gap fill below we actually not only did we close the gap we actually tested that previous support resistance equal support and uh, traded sideways to potentially higher uh, the pivot high at 4 4 50 will be tested as well or may well be tested so that certainly is something to uh, consider going into tomorrow that's going to be quite crucial uh, if we do break lower then tomorrow you do have these key areas of support that will be tested as well now you have uh, support at 4390 4370 and you have 4350 so interesting scenario with regards to the french cac uh, the 60 minute certainly continues to have higher highs and higher lows so that certainly needs to be respected from a large perspective we just about held on to that key diagonal trend line and we'll see whether or not we can sustain that or potentially make a break lower. Okay. Now, the uh, FTSE 100 doji candle certainly indicating a potential uh, reversal. Looking to move here, a uh, lower here, folks. Okay. This key resistance here at four, FTSE at 4160 zone. Okay. So it certainly needs to be respected. 4190 was a pivot high intraday. The 60 minute chart has a HS formation. So therefore, looking for weakness and looking to break down. Although the US markets certainly have been uh, quite stellar and did actually finish uh, positive into the close. The 10 minute chart, the FTSE, you have resistance in this key zone here at 4150. If we do retest or so start to first tie, then you are looking at 6190 as resistance for the remainder of the day. Okay, so that's the um, summation really. I mean, the uh, FTSE has support at 6100 and resistance at 6150. So again, we're going to be oscillating within that zone. Currently around the 6133 after hours at the moment. And we shall see. Now, my stop loss is 1987 on the S&P 500. I didn't expect that gap to close on the S&P, so quite an impressive move. The Shanghai certainly seems to have potentially put in a base here. We'll see whether or not that can sustain itself, especially given the fact that Moody's downgraded its debt. So, again, that's certainly something to consider. The uh, the Nikkei itself, yes, we have had a uh, impressive move higher. Quite an impressive thrust higher. You do have an unfilled gap just above at 17,000. I think we're currently already trading at that level at the moment after hours. Let's just bring up the chart, the S Nikkei. 
and uh, after hours we are yeah just about uh, 16 well basically we hit that 16,800 level okay so uh, the 17,000 isn't too far off so again that is going to act as potential resistance okay so it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, the Nikkei responds now if you take the pivot high to the pivot low you are into that fib 61 to 75 percent resistance so this zone here is going to be quite crucial in terms of the next potential move in the market so again certainly take that into consideration as well okay now the other factor uh, to consider here is obviously all prices are into resistance okay uh, the other important factor really is the uh, stock 600 okay if i bring up the stock 600 on a daily chart you can see the weekly chart is at a resistance zone daily chart approaching resistance so certainly remains weak if i bring up the s p uh, 350 one second the european 350 okay so that's the energy okay so you have mining which is here okay let's bring up the s p 350 energy okay so you certainly have this inverted head and shoulders formation which is quite impressive but you are now coming into resistance on that as well so not too far off in terms of potential resistance on the energy side although it's quite an impressive move the fact that you have uh, an inverted head and shoulders now the financials as well you do have an inverted head and shoulders formation there ever since mr draghi said he's watching keep, keeping a keen eye on financials etc and it certainly has pushed higher so you are coming into resistance on both and not too far off so it has been quite an impressive move uh, as such so certainly take that into consideration when trading the european markets okay now i just want to bring up the yen because i think the yen is quite important the yen has certainly made a base here and looking to potentially move higher which generally means risk off for the rest of the markets now the aussie certainly is overextended now over it certainly has uh, come into resistance on the daily chart and therefore you are looking at potential reversal and a move lower uh, the kiwi itself as well the kiwi certainly has been lagging to a large extent uh, i did close out my long swing long on the, on the kiwi given the lagging nature of the uh, the actual variable at this very moment in time okay the chart of copper as well quite bullish although as you can see we are coming into previous support equals resistance so indicating weakness there as well the banking sector which i've already explained and showed you to a large extent but the banks uh, from the FTSE 100 perspective let's just look at the 60 minute chart here okay so there seems to be some sort of error on my on my uh, charting package today so we ignore that for now uh, again the shanghai is going to be important the s p 500 is going to be important as well uh, stock 600 uh, this is going to be important as you can see we are coming into potential resistance there now the s p euro 350 as you can see here is into resistance already and therefore you are looking at a risk off tone with regards to the uh, the actual uh, s p euro 350 so overall from my perspective especially given the fact that the FTSE 100 has resistance and is going to be putting in a potential hns formation that should signal risk off for the remainder of the or the rest of the markets uh, as well okay so i think that's a market wrap be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs uh, good night now